Okay, so this is uh, the second problem on the organic chemistry on the last week of chemistry uh, two, and which is uh, regarding the elimination reaction. So they give you a clue that, okay, I'm going to tell you that this is an elimination reaction. That makes my life a little bit more easier to understand. Here, uh, you need to have a two different concepts to, to solve it, and I want to tell you up front right now what it is. What is uh, what is called the Newman projection? Okay, and probably you have you have seen something looks like people are drawing this this one uh, that's a cover in the back, and the one in the front is showing up here. And so that's a Newman projection idea, and then also the rotation rotation around sigma bonding, okay? So this is uh, related to the idea about the, the uh, rotation around the sigma bonding in the Newman uh, projection. The second one, which is I'm going to put it in more uh, emphasizing it, what is what we call the steric hindrance, okay? So steric hindrance is uh, something that when the reaction should occur, in here is an elimination. The elimination means we need a base and taking the hydrogens away from this. And this elimination is a molecule has to approach to take the hydrogen away. And if the something is crowded and that's what, what they call the uh, uh, steric hindrance is high, then they would not want to do that. Okay, they want to wait until the crowdedness is, is getting, uh, has, the problem is getting uh, resolved. Okay, so steric hindrance is the one that uh, people use. Uh, sometimes they call steric crowding. Okay, but it's not, steric hindrance is much more uh, favorite term that organic chemists use. Okay, so let's look at the problem. This is a compound, okay, so I can see that that's a living group. This is a living group, so they're going to leave, and this is a base, so this is what we're going to put a base. So this is a base, and we call, uh, this is a base, and this is a strong base, actually, because it's an alkoxide. They love to uh, take the proton, they became essentially alcohol, right? So they want to take the, on and get rid of the formal charges, mm -hmm. so it's a strong base, it's a, a oxide ion. So this is a strong base. So it's, it's like a strong base. Remember, that will be like a, a bimolecular. The base is enough to try to take that hydrogen away uh, from where whatever is possible to do it here. And then you look at here, uh, the E2 reaction, they are looking for the carbon, the hydrogen, the adjacent to it. And then there are two types of hydrogen, and you you need to you need to look look at here. First one is the hydrogen. There is a hydrogen here. This hydrogen can be taken by essentially RO minus, or there is a hydrogen over here. Right? If among these two, uh, losing losing this hydrogen will be uh, the one that will be favored because the other hydrogen, you will have a, a less substituted uh, alkene products. So by losing the one, this one uh, on the left, uh, you are going to uh, have developed the more substituted uh, double bond. And so that's the one that the products uh, prefer. So that's the one thing that you also know uh, uh, from the rule, the elimination, uh, trying to favor more substituted alkene. So that's the hydrogen they want to put it in. But there are more things to consider here, and this time we need to uh, draw the Newman projection. Okay, so now, now I'm going to give you, so let's suppose that you are looking at here, looking through this direction. Okay, so this is uh, your eyes. Your eyes are here, and you, you want to look through this. And then I am going to color the one uh, in the front as uh, something blue. And I want to do the something in the back as a red. And then uh, the one in the back, you're going to put a circle there. 
and and then the let's see uh, the one in the front you're going to put the uh, blue so you're going to put a little dot there okay and then uh, you can see that this is an ethyl so you are putting ethyl sticking out so that's that's an ethyl right ethyl at the bottom and this is a methyl on the right hand side when you're standing from and looking at it so that's the one that's a methyl and then the hydrogen that you we think that I can kind of color it now already this is on hydrogen same hydrogen that the base would want to take take it away and then uh, let's look at the uh, the put the uh, essentially uh, con confirmation of this molecule and then the, this is a CH3 which is like a opposite side of the ethyl group so that will be a methyl group is standing there and then the, this is a one that chlorine is on the moving away from the plane so this is where chlorines are and then then this is where the other one which is a uh, uh, what's what's there okay hydrogens so these are the hydrogens in the back carbon right so if you want to draw that there's some hydrogen there okay so these are the hydrogens and i i just finished drawing it and then we want to uh, give you the idea about okay so, so then we we just talked about ro base strong base we like to take this one this hydrogen over there but now I'm going to kind of uh, give you an exaggeration of this scenario here. If you look at this, this is a living group. Okay, I, I got that living group. But if you look here, this methyl group is kind of bulky head, right? So this methyl group is sort of the located where uh, the, uh, the, the approaching this uh, R coxide anion. And to be sterically hindered. So this is a more, there is a steric hindrance. Steric hindrance. And for, for approaching the molecule because of the methyl, as you can see, the methyl is more like a carbon with hydrogens like this. So they are essentially much bigger than compared to the hydrogen there. So I would like to see the other opportunities by kind of rotating this. So that's why it's a rotation around sigma bonding. And then what, what am I going to see? So in this case, I will not going to, uh, going to uh, make a change, um, but it's, uh, uh, I will not make a change on the uh, carbon in the back. So I'll keep the carbon in the bag as, as it is. So this time I'm going to put it in the methyl chlorine, which is a living group, hydrogen, it's just as they, as they are. But now this time, uh, this time I'm going to rotate this, right? So I'm going to rotate this one, the, the front one, by 60 degrees. Okay, rotation, 60 degree rotation for another one, right? So therefore, uh, the new one here, now hydrogen comes down here. So this is center carbon. Hydrogen pointing in the back. And then, uh, okay, and then the ethyl uh, is here. And then the, you have a methyl over the, over the other side. Okay, so I want this one to, so this is a scenario that you, you, you should now go keep that in mind. This one is a living group, right? This one is a living group to live away. The best location is actually right there, the, the opposite side. Uh, that is uh, uh, not, that's strictly crowd, but it's not the hydrogen is sitting there. So I guess I have to do the one more time rotation, okay? So let's do that one more time. If you have, if you have, if you can be fa fast enough, uh, you can just do it at once. But it's important to keep the one at the one at the one position, the carbon in the bag at the uh, one position, 
And then what you do now is I want to do the rotation one more time. Okay, so this is the rotation for the one more time. And then what you see now here is here is an hydrogen. Okay, and then the ethyl goes to the other side, and the methyl is standing in the back. Okay, so. So they can free to rotate around another 60 degree rotation around sigma axis, right? And that's what you have now. Finally, this is a form. Now you have this situation where you have chlorine as a living group and the hydrogen on the other side, which is that this is the same hydrogen that just uh, rotates around the sigma bonding but now they are in the opposite side together. So this is uh, what is actually uh, in the, uh, one of the generic answer form that they're trying to give it to the answer to you. So in the beginning, just like I've shown the example here, you have a chlorine living group in the back and hydrogen in the same side, and this one make it uh, when the uh, base trying to take it, and then, and this one is trying to make a double bond here. This the bond. This bond is formed a double bond, and then this one is making the living group. Living group. This is too much crowded. They want to be something in the opposite side so that they give enough spaces. They give a uh, you know give uh, enough spaces over there, right? This is a good spaces. They put it over there, whereas they they can provide the uh, another spaces for this one to to leave. So okay, so this this is a space for the living group to to leave away. So geometrically speaking, uh, I'm talking about uh, R O base trying to take the hydrogen and approaching it they are not interfered by the action of chlorine leaving as a chlorine minus uh, on the other side so therefore this is a, what in the in the text answer is called uh, anti configuration they want to be on the other side and they are also not as sterically crowded as before so these are less steric uh, hindrances for the uh, ROH to uh, approaching here, right? So by doing so, what what's what what's going to happen uh, to the to the my molecule? So the molecule that I then I can see now is uh, you are going to you are you are going to favor this scenario, and then now you the R O will form the bonding, and this will form the double bonding, and then they will leave as a living group. So by doing so, then we you can kind of put this one in a perspective. This is a carbon before. This is a carbon in the back. Uh, and the one that uh, essentially they want to form the double bond when they're taking the hydrogens away. But now you're, you're seeing this methyl ethyl on on pointing up so methyl here ethyl here and then methyl on this side and hydrogen on the other side so that's the product that when when this ro base our coxide base taking the hydrogen and uh, and then as a, as a consequence, you are going to have a chlorine minus going away. And this is a product that you're going to see. Okay. So now this is a product that you will see, which is a carbon, carbon, which is an ethyl and a methyl. You want to say methyl. This is a methyl and then hydrogen. So this compound is... What is a cis versus trans configuration uh, on this on isomer? This is what we call cis isomer. Okay, 
So this is a sysisomer because we are just looking for something that is same, and this is the same methyl in the opposite side. Oh, so this is a, not the cis. We call this as a trans, trans isomer. So this is a, a, a they they form the uh, trans isomers because they are the opposite side. Uh, we are looking for this. This is uh, actually a little bit confusing in a way because. Somebody might wonder, what about uh, naming this priority? Ethyl versus this. This got the priority. And if you're looking from the priority side, this versus that. And this one get the priority over this. So this is on the same side of the upside. And then this is a case, actually, by using this notation of the priority. And this is what we call the... You remember the E versus Z? E means the in German ein together, which is the uh, opposite side, and the Z means together, zusammen, and this is a zusammen. So this is a G isomer. Okay. So actually, this is a much more, more easier and more scientific, and IUPAC prefer to use the E versus Z, not the cis versus trans, but uh, for the nature of the how uh, trans and cis being defined, you identify something that is essentially symmetric uh, on the opposite side. So that's a trans isomer. But in the in the using the general priority rule, then this is a sort of the zusammen. That's typically ended up in cis. So this is a very exceptional molecule, has this mixed uh, ideas. Okay, so. You have this uh, explanation uh, that is uh, generically put it in, okay? You will not form cis product. Uh, the, the product is trans double bond in this case, okay? Due to the fact that this is a leaving group and uh, the, the uh, base, the strong base would like to take this uh, hydrogen away and then these two carbon, the one in the front, the one in the back, will form the double bond just shown up here. And so by looking at this, they are on the same side, they are on the other side, so that's why they are on this side. And if I color that, okay, this is, they are on the same side. And the, you know, this is a, sometimes a, is a difficult, but we start to understand it. It's pretty, pretty good. So this is a, this is a case, and we call this is a trans isomer. Okay, and I also bring I asked a Dr. Ma do to because sometimes it's pretty uh, confusing to see which way is a cis and trans. And uh, here, I mean, this is an easy example: chlorine here, chlorine here. That's the same size, which you call cis. Chlorine here, chlorine here. That's a trans, right? So cis means the same side and trans means the cross. But IUPAC has a different meaning uh, using this priority rule. And this uh, juzamen versus E. Uh, juzamen means uh, together. It's more like a cis, but we have seen, showing you that uh, the case that we have seen uh, over there was a case where it is a juzamen, but that's a trans for the a similarity of the methyl on, on different side, and we just look for the something that is symmetric or asymmetric. Okay, so the Eintgegen is for the opposite side. Okay, so that's a notation, and I'm, I use a notation. This is going a little bit to to go beyond because the cis and trans and E and Z sometimes are not the same. Typically, cis is mean the same size, so that's a juzamen, right? And the trans mean the eintagagen on the other side. So this is a trans and eintagagen is the same. But sometimes uh, you might not get the same scenario. Okay. So, okay. So I, uh, it's a long way that I come about here to talk about here. This molecule, you, you should see this as a chance for when the base take this hydrogen, this uh, in a recap, this hydrogen, their hydrogen on the opposite side. Okay. Because of the, you know, in a very uh, generic sense, because of the steric hindrance. They want a symmetric, and the, when the molecule goes in, they want to be on the other side. I also try to give you this kind of the 
a color diagram to see that when the base approaching it, leaving group, they should not be in the same traffic then, right? So they are on the opposite side, and that's the one that they want to have, and that's why you are getting this molecule in this shape.